Today I'm visiting Henk Tennekes, um, a toxicologist in Holland, to ask him several questions on um, the neonicotinoids in the environment. Um, I would like to ask him, how did you come to study this subject? Well, that's a couple of years ago when an official report was submitted to the Dutch Ministry of Agriculture on uh, bee decline. And I was amazed that there was very little information on the potential role of insecticides. And then I started investigating the subject a little and soon discovered that um, there had been a huge outcry in France uh, among beekeepers on the use of a, of a new insecticide, so, so-called neonicotinoid insecticide by the name of imidacloprid, uh, that uh, apparently caused uh, a bee decline. So uh, I started investigating uh, that uh, compound and then discovered that it exhibited dose-response characteristics for arthropods that were very similar to those seen with chemical carcinogens. And I've been a, a cancer researcher most of my professional career. And when I then discovered that we also had environmental pollution with this compound on a massive scale, ground and surface water contamination with this compound, then I realized that we really had a problem on our hands. Mm -hmm. And that something needed to be done. So the first thing I did was to publish um, my findings in a scientific journal. And then I decided to write a book to warn the general public about an impending environmental catastrophe. That is in a nutshell what I've been doing. Mm. Sounds really drastic. Uh, catastrophe, you mean that uh, really there's some big danger coming uh, from the insecticides and use of pesticides. Why is it so dangerous? Well, basically because there is uh, probably no safe level of exposure. Uh, very tiny amounts of these insecticides can have devastating effects in the long run. Um, and they stay in the groundwater for a long time or are they broken they, down? They are, they are degraded very, very slowly in soil and, um, and water. And uh, some, some of these chemicals have a half-life of up to 20 years. Oh. So after 20 years you've still got half of your compound in the soil. And when you spray each year it comes again and again? When you spray it, uh, it, it probably contaminates the soil and ev ev every now and then. Mm -hmm. uh, but also these chemicals are used as systemic insecticides. Now, seeds are coated with these insecticides and they're then taken up by, by uh, the whole plant, permeate the plant and, and also when, when the plant is flowering, then it uh, also contaminates uh, pollen and nectar and this is how bees uh, are getting intoxicated. Mm. Most people won't realize it that uh, plants in, in wildlife uh, can also be contaminated. Uh. Yes, because of the ground and surface water pro contamination, uh, the chemical basically goes spread through the environment mm -hmm. and uh, wild plants will also take it up and become poisonous for insects. Mm -hmm. Does it also mean that when we collect bees, uh, honey from the bees, that uh, this honey will be contaminated by yes, yes the honey, really? The honey is contaminated also with these oh. insecticides, and and then the trouble is that when because they're used as systemic uh, compounds, they're basically uh, entering the food chain. So uh, in the olden days, you could wash an apple and and get rid of your pesticide that way, but now it's in the apple, mm -hmm. so. It's entering the food chain. And um, when you look at uh, the mechanism of action, then you see that uh, the, the, the damage that this chemical is causing is, is cumulative. So if you expose an, an organism for a long time, you get 
an accumulation of toxicity that can ultimately have detrimental effects. Mm. So it must be also have been researched by other toxicologists and been published in, in, in uh, scientific literature or not? Yes, it has. Uh, there's uh, a lot of recent literature and what it shows is that these chemicals have adverse effects on arthropods at ex very, very low levels of exposure. Mm -hmm. So they're really dangerous. And, and one of the aspects that, uh, that has become uh, increasingly uh, uh, known is, is that there is an immunosuppression of, uh, by, by very tiny amounts. In the bees, you mean? In bees, but maybe also in other, in other organisms in wildlife. Mm -hmm. um, and the pesticides are sprayed uh, at dangerously high uh, levels and... Uh, why isn't the government taking action? Or is it not so well known by, by politicians that this is a danger? Well, they've, they've basically the insecticides have been approved and... Uh, right, they've been approved, yeah. And uh, the trouble is that some of the aspects that are critical in this respect have not been properly investigated, mm -hmm. such as the chronic toxicity of these insecticides to to bees and, and, and other non-target insects. And uh, this, is, this is one of the problems. Mm -hmm. And also, um, they have underestimated the leaching potential of, uh, mm -hmm. of these compounds and the contamination of ground and surface water. So, th although the, these pesticides have been approved for use also um, by, by ordinary people to use in their gardens, yeah, that still uh, has a crea uh, creates a problem. It creates a problem because various aspects have been uh, undervalued. Uh -huh. So, and um, do you hope in the future that more people will become aware uh, of the dangers? Because uh, you found it very uh, shocking, and all the things you found, and then you started to write about it, book. A disaster in the making. Well, it, it is a disaster in the making if, if you have on the one hand a chemical that causes irreversible and cumulative damage to arthropods and on the other, other hand contaminates the environment. That is a recipe for disaster. Mm -hmm. And when you look at uh, butterflies, they're, they're declining. Mm -hmm. uh, the bees are declining. And the, in, the invertebrate dependent birds are de very often declining. Uh, on, on the farmland birds are, are, are crashing at the moment. Uh, uh, the, the arable land has become a, a graveyard for birds. So um, the, the, there are signs that uh, the disaster is happening before our eyes. Mm -hmm. And I, I should think it should be stopped. Yes. So you, you took the responsibility to write the book because you feel the responsibility for the environment and for the humans and the wildlife. And what responses did, did you get, uh, maybe from colleagues, toxicologists around the world? Well, there were a lot of positive responses, especially, especially from professional breed beekeepers in Italy, France, Germany, England, the UK uh, and, and the United States. Mm -hmm. But... Um, so far, no regulatory authority has responded uh, uh, to my, uh, my pledge to, uh, to do something about the environment. You environment mean uh, the rules problems. must be more sharp? To, to, or I think the, the rules have to be tightened and uh, we also need to determine ground and surface water pollution of, on a much larger scale. There has to be uh, continuous monitoring. Mm -hmm. of, uh, of ground and surface water pollution. Would you like to see the pesticides uh, being forbidden at all? or is not? I, I, I think the, the neonicotinoids are a recipe for disaster and they should be banned. Okay. Yeah. So you pledge uh, to people who are watching this uh, video, what is your pledge? Take action, uh, visit your politicians or, or eat, eat biological food or what, is, what would you say? Well, basically, um, I, th I think that the, the, the decisions are taken by governments and by politicians. 
So I, I think it's probably the best course of action is to uh, to write to local MPs, to politicians that you know, and urge them to, to take this problem very seriously. And urge them also to read your book about the shocking facts that you found about these new continuous Yes. So as when you see the facts, they know how urgent the problem is. Well, I hope so. I hope they will realize that we have a real problem on our hands. Mm. And uh, well, what about setting up more uh, beehives and, and, and spreading uh, more uh, bees? Well, what do you think of that initiative that I've heard of some people? Well, I think that's very important because many beekeepers are, are, uh, are old age pensioners and, uh, and we need young beekeepers. Um, I, I think that's very important.